Hi students, in this lecture we will be discussing the transition from FERA, a controlling law, to FEMA, a management law. Let's start by discussing the basic scheme of FERA and FEMA. The scheme of FERA provided for obtaining reserve bank's permission, either special or general, in respect of most of the regulations thereunder. The general permissions have been granted by Reserve Bank under these provisions in respect of various matters by issuing large number of notification from time to time since the Act came into force from 1st January 1974. Special permissions were granted upon the applicants submitting prescribed application for this purpose. Thus, in order to understand the operative part of the regulations, one has to refer to the Exchange Control Manual as well as the various notification issued by RBI and the central government. FEMA has brought about a sea change in this regard. And except for Section 3, which relates to dealing in foreign exchange, etc., no other provisions of the FEMA stipulate obtaining RBI permission. It appears that this is a transition from era of permissions to regulation. The emphasis of FEMA is on RBI laying down regulations rather than granting permissions on case-to-case -case basis. This transition has also taken away the concept of exchange control and brought in the era of exchange management. In view of this change, the title of the legislation has rightly been changed to Foreign Exchange Management Act. The preamble to FEMA lays down that the Act is to consolidate and amend the law relating to foreign exchange with the objective of facilitating external trade and payments and for promoting orderly development and maintenance of foreign exchange market in India. As far as facilitating external trade is concerned, Section 5 of the Act removes restriction on drawal of foreign exchange for the purpose of current account transaction as external trade that is import or export of goods and services involved transaction on current account there will be no need for seeking rbi permissions in connection with remittances involving external trade the need to remove restrictions on current account transaction was necessitated as the country has given notice to imf in august 1994 that it had attained article 8 status this notice meant that no restrictions will be imposed on remittances of foreign exchange on account of current account transactions. Section 5, however, contains a proviso that the central government may in public interest and in consultation with Reserve Bank impose such reasonable instruction for current account transaction as may be prescribed. It appears that this is an enabling provision for the central government to impose restriction on current account transaction in case the situation warrants such restrictions, probably due to foreign exchange crisis in future. This proviso seems to have been added keeping in view the lessons learned by certain Southeast Asian countries during the 1997-98 crisis which required stricter exchange control till the crisis was over. Similarly, Section 7 retains control on exporters as well. Now let me explain why FEMA was actually introduced. The demand for new legislation was basically on two main counts. First, FERA was introduced in 1974 when India's foreign exchange reserves position was not satisfactory. It required stringent control to conserve foreign exchange and to utilize it in the best interest of the country. Very strict restrictions have outlived their utility in the current change scenario. Secondly, there was a need to remove the draconian provisions of FERA and have a forward-looking legislation covering foreign exchange matter. Now let's discuss the transition of foreign exchange regulation regime from FERA to FEMA. This can be explained under three major headings. The first point is reduce control and regulation. FERA contained 81 sections. Some were deleted in 1993 amendment of the Act of which 32 sections related to operational part and the rest covered penal provisions, authority and power of enforcement directed etc. 
On the other hand, FEMA contains 49 sections of which only 12 sections cover operational part and the rest contain contravention, penalties, adjudication, appeals, enforcement directorate, etc. However, this does not mean that the regulation or control have been reduced in the same extent because what was a full section under FEMA seems to have been reduced to a subclause under FEMA in some cases. Second point is repeal of draconian provisions under FERA. The draconian regulations under FERA related to unbridled power of enforcement directorate. These powers enable enforcement directorate to arrest any person, search any premises, seize any documents and start proceedings against any person for contravention of FERA or for preparation of contravention of FERA. The contravention under FERA was treated as a criminal offence and the burden of proof was on guilty. FEMA has reduced the rigour of exchange control by removing or diluting these provisions. The contravention has been treated as a civil offence under FEMA. Primarily under FEMA, for an offence the accused cannot be arrested. He can be arrested only for non-payment of penalty imposed for contraventions. Specific provisions has been made by fixing a time limit of 24 hours for bringing the arrested person before the adjudicating authority. Similarly, in respect of appeals filed before appellate tribunal, a period of 180 days has been stipulated for final disposal of the appeals. No such time limit was laid down under FERA. The powers of enforcement directed have been substantially reduced and new provisions for adjudicating authority and compounding of cases have been introduced. Now what does compounding of cases mean? Compounding of cases is almost equivalent to settlement between plaintiff and defendant in a civil matter. Under this, concerned authority agree not to prosecute an offender on payment of a fine or other consideration. This concept is also applicable in few offences provided under IPC as well. Legal provisions regarding compounding of offences are contained in Section 320 of Code of Criminal Procedure 1973. Third and last point is making foreign exchange contravention a civil wrong. FERA had its genesis in the defence of India rules. The British government had enacted these rules to exercise control over its colonies. Hence, FERA was like a criminal law. Section 35 empowered any officer of enforcement directorate to arrest a person if he had a reason to believe that the person is guilty of violation of FERA. There are several reported cases of human rights violation by enforcement directorate. Such laws do not have a place in a democratic country like ours. FEMA is a civil law. Primarily, there is no imprisonment for violation of the law. Only penalty can be levied under Section 13. However, if the person cannot pay the penalty, then he can be arrested. Under FERA, there was a presumption regarding mental culpable state. Mental culpable state means the existence of guilty mind. That is, the accused person has the intention, motive or knowledge of the violation of law. Under FERA, a court has to presume the existence of such a guilty mind unless the accused proved that he had no guilty mind. Under FEMA, this presumption is not there. The prosecution will have to prove that the person has committed a violation of the law. With this, the lecture comes to an end. In this lecture, we have discussed the transition of Indian foreign exchange regime from FERA to FEMA. We have discussed the general scheme of both FERA and FEMA. We also discussed why FEMA was a much needed change for Indian economy. Lastly, we have discussed the main three deviation points of FEMA from FERA, which are first, control and regulation reduction, second, repeal of draconian provision under FERA, third, making foreign exchange contravention a civil wrong. If you still have any doubts or queries, please contact us on doubts at fusionlawschool.com. Thanks for watching this video lecture. Hi viewers, to know more about us, please visit fusionlawschool.com or you can also visit us on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. Links are provided here. To stay updated, subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. 
If you like this video, please like, share and comment down below.